Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Kate Boyd and I'm a piano professor here in Indianapolis. I created this channel to help you bring your piano playing to the next level. This is the first video in my series on the foundations of piano technique. In this series, I'll be talking about the top five technical issues I work on with my students. Today, I'm gonna to talk about hand position. Stick around till the end. Near the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how my three technical principles that I talked about in the intro video to this series relate to the topic of hand position. Also, I've created a downloadable practice companion to this series, and the link to it is in the description of this video. You can get it for free. Recently, my husband and I went hiking in Red River Gorge, which is an area of Kentucky with the most natural bridges east of the Mississippi River. It's incredibly beautiful beautiful there. We discovered it as a drivable place to visit during the pandemic and we liked it so much we've been back twice. There are many trails and they're designed so that they lead back to a natural bridge or an arch, often with a spectacular overlook. Another place with a lot of natural bridges is Arches National Park in Utah. These arches survive for years without collapsing because the arch shape gives them strength and helps keep them from collapsing. You can also see the structure in the St. Louis arch and you can see it in old stone bridges. The arch shape gives support to the structure. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna turn this into a travel channel or get too in the weeds about architecture and engineering here, but we pianists can learn something from studying these structures. Here's how the stones in a bridge can create a self-supporting arch. You can see that the way the stones support and balance each other make it incredibly strong. The stone at the top is called the keystone and it serves the purpose of locking the whole structure together. Not only do these structures stay up, but they can bear weight. Trucks can drive across a stone bridge without it collapsing. Collapsing. Compare this to a brick wall. I took this picture a few blocks from my house. Here we have a row of bricks, but without the arch shape, the bricks can't hold themselves up. Without all the bricks in the lower part of that wall, the top row of bricks would just collapse. Our hand bones function in a similar way to a stone bridge. I have two fun facts about the hand. The hand has 19 small bones in it and the fingers in the hand actually don't end at the hand, but attach at the wrist. I was able to borrow a model of the hand bones from the anatomy department. So here's a model of the hand. You can see all the 19 bones in it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then three for the thumb, 17, 18, 19 bones. We tend to think of the hand as a palm attached to the arm and then there's fingers protruding from the hand. So we have the arm coming up like a stick and then a round palm and then the fingers protruding off of them. Let me map this onto my hand here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So you can see how the finger bones go all the way down to the wrist. And all this meaty stuff here in what we call the hand, the palm, and the solid area here, it's actually muscles and tendons. So the role of these 19 bones is to support the shape of the hand. We as pianists want to use that to our advantage and not over rely on using muscles and tendons which can get strained and injured. This rounded supported hand position is often called the hand bridge or hand arch by pianists and piano teachers. I'm gonna use these terms interchangeably, although I usually refer to it as a hand bridge. Going back to the stone bridge analogy, the bones tend to support each other when they are arched. So you can see that there's a self-supporting structure created by this geometry. And you can see this arch shape when I hold up my hand here. But when I make the bones flat like this or like this, there's nothing in the, in the hand to support it and the hand would just need to rely solely on muscles to move the fingers. This is what a collapsed hand bridge looks like. You can see that the bones are not supporting each other and any strength that there is has to come from the muscles and tendons. In hand position, we want and need a round arch because it gives the fingers leverage and they can fall into the keys. If the hand is flat, you have to basically lift the fingers and it is really stressful for the hand. So again, here is what a round arch looks like. Here's what a collapsed arch looks like. Notice that with the round arch, the fingers and hand look normal in the sense that they look like they look when you do other activities. Like when you're sitting around and watching a movie and your hands are in your lap, do your hands look like this? Or do they look like this? When you're walking around, do your hands look like this? Or like this. 
right? The natural default hand position is gently rounded with loose fingers and thumb. So I want to do a little exercise with you. I invite you to stand up along with me. You can also do this while seated as long as your arms can hang freely. As you stand or sit, find a good upright posture. You want to feel your spine erect and your shoulders relaxed and back. Don't hunch forward, but instead support from your core and let yourself be grounded through the bottoms of your feet or through your sitting bones, whether you're standing or sitting. Let your arms hang loosely at your sides. Feel your hands and fingers relax and notice that your fingers naturally assume a rounded, gentle arch shape. Now take your arm and just bend it at the elbow and keep the hand and fingers and wrist all in the same shape. You're not gonna move any of your other joints like your wrist or fingers, just hinge at your elbow. Do that with both arms. Notice that your hand feels very relaxed and you're not curving or curling your fingers. You're also not bending your wrist or moving your shoulders or neck. Now, swivel your arm around and hold your arm up in front of your face, like me. Look at the shape of your hand. Think of that as your hand bridge. Now we're gonna take this to the piano. So let's sit at the piano and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let my hand slowly descend to the keys and keep that arch shape intact. And I'm just gonna play one finger at a time and I'm bending at the elbow. For this exercise, I'm not bending at the wrist. So you can feel that this takes very little effort. I'm playing one note at a time with a good rounded hand arch. You should be able to notice that you are not tensing any muscles in your hand to make this happen. And this motion should feel free and easy. So I'm just lifting and I'm just playing notes with a good rounded hand position. This rounded hand bridge or arch is the default hand position that you're gonna to want to cultivate at the piano. Sometimes your fingers will be more straight, like this, or more curved, but the hand arch will remain supported and rounded. So we're talking about this part of the hand here that's gonna remain rounded and not collapsed. So it's basically these knuckles. There are a couple of really reliable ways to find a good hand position at the piano. The first method is turn your hands over at the keyboard, like this, and imagine that you're holding an apple or an orange, not something small like, like a ping pong ball because that makes your fingers curl, like a nice open big piece of fruit like an apple or an orange or a grapefruit. Then turn your hands over and boom, there's your hand position. So like this. Now a second method is you can put one hand at your side and then you let your hands be loose and then you lift your hand up to the keyboard. I normally do that while I'm sitting, but the camera doesn't show that, so I had to stand up to do that. The thing to watch out for is don't curl your fingers as you do that. People sometimes have a habit of over curving their fingers as they put their hand into playing position. I'm gonna talk about this issue of over curving and curling your fingers in my video on alignment. One sign of a supported hand bridge is being able to see all of your knuckles all in a row. Do you see how mine are all bumping up there to the surface, they're kind of popping up. When the hand is not supported, a lot of times you only see these first two and then the, the, these other two on the outside of the hand kind of recede back beneath the skin and it looks smooth. Another sign of good hand position is that the back of the hand is relatively flat, not tilted. You might have heard stories about an old fashioned method of teaching piano where a teacher would put pennies on the backs of a student's hands and then the student would have to play the piano without the pennies falling off. This is a problematic teaching method for many reasons, but I'm bringing up this story because this idea of having a supported hand bridge goes way back and teachers have been trying, for a couple of centuries at least, to find ways to teach their students how to support the outside of their hand and have a good hand bridge. Here's the hand position we want to strive for. And here's what it looks like when the hand is collapsed. A lot of times students try to play with a more supported hand bridge, but they can't physically support the outside of the hand. They keep raising it up, but it keeps collapsing. If you find it difficult to support the outside of your hand, 
don't worry. It just takes some time along with patience and persistence to change something as fundamental as hand position. It's sort of like shifting your posture. It starts with awareness and setting an intention to make a change and happens gradually over time. Here are a couple of exercises you can do to start making a shift in your hand position. One way is to take a pencil and hold it under your hand or a pen uh, to pop up all the knuckles. So like here's my hand, the outside is collapsed. So I'm putting my pen underneath here to pop up those knuckles. And uh, another way you can do it is you can just use your other hand. You can just put your hand under there and pop them up. And you know you're doing it right when you actually see the knuckles come up underneath the skin. If you're not used to this, it can feel pretty weird. I remember my teacher, Mrs. Frixell, reaching under my hand when I was a kid and popping my knuckles up, and it felt super unstable and strange at first. Now, we need to talk about the fifth finger. There's a muscle on the outside of the hand that's used to support the fifth finger. It's usually weak in students who have collapsed hands because it's underdeveloped. It used to be incredibly weak for me, but then I spent some time working on strengthening it. So I'll show you the exercise that worked for me. We're going to turn sideways to the keyboard and close the fall board over the keys. Gently rest your hand on the closed fall board and it all the way to the elbow and lift and tap with the fifth finger. <clears throat> you can also do this on a tabletop. Just make sure that your arm is resting all the way back to the elbow and that your arm is not twisted in front of your body like this. The thing that's super important is to keep all of your other muscles relaxed and just gently lift and tap the fifth finger. Watch the thumb. The tip should not be curved. It should be loose like this. There is another really effective fifth finger exercise that I can attribute to the great pianist and teacher Seymour Bernstein. You take your fifth, fifth finger and you extend it uh, straight down from your hand like this. Then, okay, you gotta make sure you have a relaxed thumb though. Don't curl your thumb out. Then play notes all over the keyboard like this. Go up and down, initiating this from the arm. Remember, this is like that exercise we did before where we hinged from the elbow. So it's the same kind of idea. So you can do scales, you can do black keys, although it's a little trickier because you might fall off. And make sure to do it in both hands. Again, notice my thumb is, is loose. Very important. You also want to watch your thumb. The thumb should be straight, not curves curved out. When the tip of the thumb is curved out, it's a sure sign of tension. Now, I want to say a word about the fingers. For years, I didn't understand that my fingers needed to be firm. We pianists talk a lot about relaxation, and I think that sometimes there's a misunderstanding that arises from that. I thought for a long time that I was supposed to keep everything super loose and relaxed, but the thing is, the tips of the fingers need to be firm enough to support the shape of the hand and the weight of the arm. Here are a couple of exercises to try that can help you understand how it feels to have firm fingertips. First, take your hands and rest them against each other, fingertip to fingertip, like this. Take care not to smush or collapse your knuckle joints. We don't want it to look like this. The shape should be like a dome or it should be arched. Now, gradually push your hands against each other, fingertip to fingertip. You'll feel a slight pressure on each fingertip. That is what firm fingertips feels like. Here's another exercise you can try. Take a pen or a pencil, hold it in the air, and then take the other hand and just hang the arm from the first knuckle. You'll feel firmness in your fingertips. You'll feel those taut fingers. And that's, that gives you a sense of what that feels like. As I promised at the beginning of the video, here's how my three technical principles relate to all the things we just talked about. The first technical principle, don't isolate your fingers. Having a rounded hand position with a good supported hand bridge allows you to initiate fingers motions from this knuckle here with the weight of the hand and arm behind the fingers so you don't have to individually lift each finger from a position of weakness. 
The second principle here is take your fingers with you. Minimize the amount of time you keep your hands stretched out or open or extended. A default rounded hand position leads to a feeling of loose, relaxed fingers. If we flatten the hand bridge, the hand becomes artificially stretched out and it puts strain on the muscles. The third principle, let go of the instrument. You should be lifting off the piano at least as much as you are dropping into the piano. Don't grab onto every note. There's a difference between playing with firm fingertips and pushing into the keys. Make sure that you put enough weight into the keys to drop to the bottom, but don't press past the bottom of the key. Now, what do you want to do with your beautiful new hand position? Well, you want to play the piano with it. You might find that you very quickly revert to whatever you were used to, and I suggest that you just devote some time every day to working on it and not overthinking it the rest of the time. Maybe spend about 10 minutes of each practice day doing some of these exercises to find good hand position and apply that to something you're playing, and then the rest of the day just forget about it. Over time, you should notice a difference. Remember, awareness is the beginning of all change. I've created a free PDF that you can download that summarizes the exercises in this video. And the link is in the description below. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please subscribe to my channel, The Piano Prof, so you don't miss a video. This will also be helpful to me as I build my channel. My next video is gonna be about the alignment of the fingers and hands. See you there and happy practicing.